Thank you for joining me today. Um, I know it's been a while since I released an episode and we moved. I mean, there's so many crazy life changes happening. So I put this on hold for a little bit, but now I'm back on a regular basis for you. So if you guys want to make sure you don't miss an episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button on youtube.com forward slash Tara Tinsley. And then also make sure you hit that little bell right next to it after you hit subscribe so you, may, you get notifications on when every single episode is released. So you can watch them all. You can be a little, little uh, restored fan. That'd be cool. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm back. And if you haven't watched any of the last episodes that I recorded, there's five of them. And today I'm actually going to be talking about um, kind of a continuance of the story that I talked about in episode five. So if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and pause this video, go watch it, check out that story and come back. You don't have to do that if you don't have the time though. If you're like, I don't have the time for that. I just want to watch this one. I will do a quick recap of that. But if you want the whole in-depth story and the song and the experience, you can totally go watch episode five in full. So episode five, I talked about why I started Restored. And it did all start one day in February 2019 when I found a young man who took his own life. Now, that was a hard experience for me. I mean, for everyone. I mean, suicide is not ever an easy thing to go through for anyone. And something happened to me that helped me get through it. And I wanted to share it with you because it might help you get through something else, whether it's something similar or something completely different. So after that happened, it was really hard for me in many ways. I mean, not only um, walking my dog outside near the spot where I found him. I mean, honestly, I couldn't even get there. I couldn't even mentally go that way. My dog loved that spot because it's a sandy, nice, comfortable spot. But to me, that spot was no longer comfortable. That spot was fearful to me. I was afraid because every time I got closer to that, it's like I was closer to that day, closer to that moment. And I didn't want to walk near there. So I would avoid that spot. I'd walk my dog other places. Too bad. You're not going over there ever again. I was thinking in my head. I got so fearful from even walking my dog along the peaceful waterfront of Tacoma, Washington. A thing I used to enjoy became something I was afraid of. And that's really no way to live life. But I didn't know how to get over it. Not only that, Every time I close my eyes, especially at night, I don't know why night enhances fear, but <laughs> the darkness, I don't know. But every time I would close my eyes, I would see his face. I would see the face that I saw when I knew that he wasn't alive anymore. And I couldn't get that out of my head. So I figured, okay, how, how, how do I get through this? You know, I pray to God, God, how, what do I need to do, you know? After a few weeks, it gets to the point where you're, you're thinking, is this the way my life is always gonna be? Is this gonna get better? It's not getting better. How do I make it better? What can I do? Do I need to talk to somebody? And one day when I went down stairs with my dog to go take him out again, because we lived in a condo, by the way, in the last video, I explained that. So every time my dog had to go to the bathroom, I had to physically go outside with him and take him for a walk. So, which is great for him. He had to go walk everywhere. But during that time, it was terrible for me. It was uh, really tough. So anyway, one day I go outside with him and I was like, God, what do I do? He, Blue is pulling me towards this spot. He's like, I want to go in the sand. He loves sand. He's a Labrador. They love the sand and the water. God, what do I do? And I just felt God speak to my heart. Walk over there. And I was thinking, okay, cool. Walk over there. Like, it's no big deal. Okay, well, I mean, I have faced a lot of my fears in my life, you know? Like, I'm afraid of heights still. I have not gone over that yet. But I still challenge myself by climbing things and looking down and trying to, um, trying to just be okay with it, you know? So since I have done that with heights, I thought, okay, you know what? 
I'm afraid of the spot. I can walk over there. It's not that big of a deal, you know. So I walk there, but I'm walking pretty slow, as if when I get to the end, something's gonna happen or something. And I remembered the exact spot, and I kept getting closer and closer. When I got there, I was like, God, now what? And I felt God speak to my heart. Now forgive him. And without hesitation or question, I looked at that area and I said, I forgive you. And as I'm walking away and pondering, I start feeling this burden lift off of me. This weight that I was carrying just suddenly start to disappear. It was almost magical. I didn't understand it at first until I realized I was no longer afraid. And over time I realized when I closed my eyes, I no longer saw that image in my head. I was free from that. Forgiveness made me free from that. And I didn't even realize I had something to forgive. But then, you know, thinking about it, because I'm I like to think things through and overthink sometimes. Why did it take forgiving him to lift this from me? I realized when I said those words, I forgive you, I was not only forgiving him, I was forgiving myself. I was forgiving him for doing that to himself, to his family, and to me. His pain was not ended, it only spread to the people around him. And I had to forgive myself for not being able to do something. In my head after, I was thinking, if only I would have went to the window sooner. If only I could have known him somehow and talked him out of it. If only, if only. So I had to forgive myself for looking out the window when I did and not being able to do something. Through all that, what I learned is that no matter what, if you do need to forgive, oh, there's freedom in it. I know it sounds so, oh, there's, it sounds so annoying sometimes when people are like, you just need to forgive them. It's like, you don't know what I've been through, you know? But when we don't forgive, we put ourselves in our own prison of hurt, hate, and pain. The other person that hurt us is out there living their life, whether they realize it or not that they hurt us. And we continue to allow them to hurt us by not forgiving them. Because we're harboring something against them in our heart. And don't you deserve to be free from that? So if there's someone that you need to forgive, I recommend allowing yourself and giving yourself the gift of that freedom. Because in my experience, it's been quite amazing. And if for some reason you can't think of anyone, you're like, I'm pretty good, but I do feel this weirdness in my heart sometimes, and I don't feel entirely happy, even in the most joyful moments. Well then, I know it's hard, but dig a little deeper. Discover what is really at the root of that. And you never know. You could discover that you haven't forgiven someone for something. You haven't forgiven yourself for something or you haven't forgiven God for something. There's a reason why the Bible commands us to forgive. It's for our own joy and our own peace. God wants us to feel those things. He wants us to have the best life, abundant joy, even in the toughest circumstances. So give yourself that gift. The great clouds have departed The stars light up the night Now I can see through darkness The river shines with life I've waded through the water My soul is
for joining me today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and then hit that little bell thing next to it so you don't miss a thing and get the notifications you need to know whenever the next thing is released. Either way, thank you for joining me and I will see you next time.